Today, I would like to share a few minutes about the human condition. And what I mean by the human condition is how do we view ourselves? You know, Jimmy, if I was to ask you, what do you think, what, what, do, you, what do you think about yourself? You know, what, what, what kind of person are you? Do you think that you would have an honest assessment of yourself? Or would you be like certain people? Yeah, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that. I'm great and I'm wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I thought so. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. At least you're being honest, Jimmy. It's, you know what? We all have strength and weaknesses about ourselves, you know? But the... Do you know that if we don't honestly assess ourselves, sometimes we can end up in trouble? Just like Jimmy, you ask him, you, you have people that when you ask them about themselves, they're able to tell you all the great things, don't know the bad things. Mm -hmm. But you have in reverse, when you ask certain people about themselves, all they see themselves is lack of self-worth. So when you ask them about themselves, they'll tell you every bad thing about themselves, but nothing good about themselves. Mm -hmm human condition and both of those assessments too high or too low are wrong because usually we're somewhere in the middle good bad how would we assess ourselves as Christians because you know many people tend to think especially as Christians that we are immune to anything all we got to do is just plead the blood of Jesus over it. Yeah. And then that's it. So therefore, nothing's going to happen once I plead the blood. Is that true? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. God will rescue us. But sometimes the rescue that we think we're going to get uh -huh. is not what God says we're going to get. It's not what Christ says we're going to get. Yeah. I know at times when I cry out to the Lord. And listen to this. God will take us through some things, right? My prayer when I cry out to the Lord is never God take me through it. It's God take it away. Right? Yes. When you're going through something, you're saying, you know, God, please make it stop. But you know what? That's not how God operates. And we need to stop looking at the Lord in that manner. Because you know what? God... You know, my, my prayer to God, while wanting to take me out of it, I understand who God is. How many of you ever prayed a prayer? Lord, help me endure the suffering. I don't pray those. I try not to pray those prayers. I want them to take me out. How many of you like me when you call on God? God, take me out of this. I think everybody in here is like that. First Corinthians 10, 13 says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. Everybody say, God is faithful. God is faithful. And he will not let you be tempted, this to this, beyond what you can bear. But when you're tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. When stuff is going bad, God is not, if, I'll put this in weightlifting terms. If I can only lift 200 pounds and God knows all I can lift is 200 pounds, God is not going to allow 300 pounds to come upon me. Are you with me? God is not going to allow something bigger than what you're capable of. God is not going to give you something that you that he knows that you can't handle, but he will give you what you can handle. You may think you can't handle it, but if you're going through some, get this, if you're going through something, anything in life and you feel the pressure is too great. I want you to understand that just because you feel the pressure is too great, God would not have allowed you to go through it unless he knew that you were able to go through it. Okay, yeah. that's that, that's key. He will not give you what you cannot handle. God, God never sets us up to fail. When we fail, it's on us, it's not God. God never sets us up to fail. God sets us up to succeed. 
to endure. Amen? Amen. That's how God is. His word is truth. His word is life. His word is eternal. So he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hebrews 13, 5 says, listen to this. It says, keep your lives free from love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, before I even say that, you know why he says, Keep your lives free from love of money and be content with what you have. He is saying, don't allow money, don't allow anything else to control you because your sufficiency does not come from money. He says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. That's where your, your sufficiency comes from. Jesus promises, Jesus promises never to leave us or forsake us so, so that his rescue may not be able to take us out of a situation, but his rescue will enable us to endure what we're going through. We as Christians are not immune. In fact, we are more susceptible to a lot of things just because we are Christians. I'm gonna repeat that. We are more susceptible to attacks from the enemy just because we're Christians. Why do you think that is? You know why? Jimmy, you know why? You sure? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, if he, I don't know either, so that's why I was asking you. <laughs> <laughs> Think about this. People that don't know Christ and are unsaved, why would the enemy waste his time to attack them? They're already serving him, right? Okay, so he's going to put time and effort into the ones that are serving him, which is us. We're Christians, so you know what? He's going to say, no, I need this, this Jimmy, Lord, they're serving Christ. I want to knock him down a few. So they're going to attack you. The guy over here that doesn't know Christ, they're going to leave him alone because he's already, he doesn't even know he's working for, 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 for the devil, but he is. So that's why when we are Christians, we're even more susceptible and open ourselves to the attack of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Let's examine this scripture, this scripture that typifies every Christian. And we must understand that Jesus, what Jesus is saying here, because if we don't get it, we will open ourselves even more to undue hardship because we do not understand our human condition. Let's examine Matthew 26, and we're going to go 31 to 41, but I'm going to break it down in parts. Matthew 26, and we're going to go from 31 to 35. It says, then Jesus told them that very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Verse 33. Peter replied, even, this to Peter, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I can see Peter, his chest getting bigger when he said that. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Verse 35. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Stop right there. Verse 35. Let us realize, let us really analyze what Peter is telling Jesus. He says, even if I have to to die with you, I will never disown you. You know, if Jesus was texting at the time, he would have texted, how many of you know what SMH means? Shake my head. <laughs> <laughs> he would have tell you, he would have, he would have, Jesus would have shook his head. Now look at this boy. Jesus has told Peter and not even just Peter, but all the disciples that they would fall away from him that very night and, G and, and Peter had the audacity to contradict what Jesus said. Jesus even goes further to tell Peter that, hey, Peter, you know what? As a matter of fact, you that's running your mouth, you are going to deny me three times. And we see that human condition in how Peter replies. And you know what that's called? Pride. Pride. Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the disciples said the same. Pride.
pride is one part of the human condition that causes us trouble. It's true. Because of pride, listen to this, it's going to be put up here. Because of pride, we tend to overestimate our ability. Look at how Peter did it. Peter overestimated his human condition and it manifested itself in pride. Peter thought that despite, this, listen to, what, this, listen to what, what, what Peter is doing here. Peter said that despite what Jesus said, I'm not going to deny you three times. And if you go later down in the verse, verse 67, 35, we saw where Peter denied him three times. Peter thought that he was able to resist whatever Jesus had said. So he thought he was strong. His pride welled up. It says, you know, he, he, Jesus, I don't, I don't know about them, but as for me, I'm not going to deny you. Listen, when we don't understand our human condition, we tend to do things and even say things that will not happen because we have overestimated what we are capable of in ourselves. And you know what? Pride, did, 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 did you know that pride was contagious? I mean, no, pride is contagious. In verse 35, he says, even I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And what? And all the other disciples said the same. Peter is the one, the ringleader, that's running his mouth. His pride is bubbling up in him. And the other guys, they're around, and they said, you know what? I, I agree with him. <laughs> Their pride started to well up also. So when you see pride also being contagious, it wasn't just Peter. It was all of the disciples, but Peter was the mouthpiece. <laughs> because of pride, we tend to overestimate our ability. Listen, there's nothing wrong with being confident in the Lord, but being confident beyond the Lord is not what he called us to do. Peter was conf confident beyond the Lord. He contradicted the Lord, not just once, but twice in that short period of time. Listen to this. It's going to be projected. Our confidence, listen to this, our confidence comes from him and him alone. Pride is what makes us believe our own hype. <laughs> okay? Pride is what makes us believe our own hype. Yeah, I can do this. I can do that. I can, yeah. And you start believing. Yep. You ever just say something over and over and over and over, even though you know it's wrong, you keep on repeating to yourself over and over and over and over and over. And over. Do you start believing it? That's pride. That's pride. You, you literally talk yourself into believing it. Come on now. Have you ever done that, Jimmy? Yes. Uh, so have I. So have I. So have I. You just start repeating stuff and you start putting it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to happen. That's going to happen. And your mind, you, you already know that this cannot happen. Right. But by the time you, re you, you repeat it and you start drilling it into yourself, you start believing the foolishness. I'm believing my hype. I am all that and a, and, and a, and a pack of cheese or whatever you want to put it in. <laughs> pack of chips. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> See, you know what? Even, even, even Peter, I'm, I'm going back into the mindset of Peter. I, I, you know, I know Peter was probably thinking about all the things that he saw Jesus do. And remember, he was probably remembering the times that, 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 that Jesus equipped them to send them out and they did miracles. So his pride probably got the best of him. And then what? He opened his big mouth. But one thing Peter did not take into account, and we need to be aware of it, that every miracle that the, the disciples did, every healing they did, everything they did, was because of Jesus Christ and the Father. All they were were the vessels. Okay. So if, if, if we're the vessels, how can you be prideful? Because the power is not from them. The power is from above. I've seen many Christians get themselves in trouble because of pride. Because they, don't, they have underestimated that human condition called pride. 
How many of you, especially going around the church, I've seen, I've seen Christians give false prophecy. I've seen them twist scripture. I have seen them do things that contradict the word of God because they were literally following their own spirit instead of the Holy Spirit. What caused them to do that? Pride. They were puffed up. Pride. Pride is a thing that will take you farther than you're willing to go, keep you longer than you're willing to stay, and cost you more than you're willing to pay. Pride. Proverbs 8.13 says, To fear the Lord is to hate evil. And look at what, look, look, look at what it says. I hate what? Pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Proverbs 16, 18 also goes on to say what? Pride what? Goes before destruction. <laughs> a haughty spirit before fall. Pride goes before destruction. When you see pride leading the way, and if that pride is in you, make sure you have a soft place to land because you're going to be falling shortly. Destruction awaits pride Proverbs 29 23 says pride brings a person low but the lowly in spirit gain honor so when you're prideful up here just like you're going to fall you're going to end up down here pride pride the human condition of pride will trip us up every time if we don't rein it in. Let me show you something, a uh, scripture about pride. And this is um, King Saul, who was the first king of Israel, and David, who was the second king of Israel. Right? David was one of King Saul's generals. And David was well known and probably most famously for David slaying the giant, right? Okay. So David is, is, is a good general and now they're coming back into the city. And we pick it up at 1 Samuel 18 verses 6 to 8. So remember who David is. He's, he's coming back in the city. It says, when the men, this is the army, David and Saul, were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, the woman came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing with joyful songs and with timbrels and lyres. So far, so good, right? Mm -hmm. The women are out there, they're singing, hey, Saul, hey. As they danced, you know, this time Saul is probably feeling good. Hey, they're, 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 they're singing about me. They're dancing about me. So he's feeling good. Probably doing the Macarena. But anyway, <laughs> as they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands. All right, we're still good. Saul slayed his thousands, Jimmy. <laughs> And David, his tens of thousands. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The people are saying Saul has slain his thousands. But David, the general, has slain tens of thousands. Verse 8. Saul, what? Was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. They have credited David with tens of thousands. He thought, but with me, only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? Do you see where pride snuck in there? He was, he was okay, but just because somebody was elevated, not in stature, but elevated of stuff they did, which was truthful because Saul had killed thousands, David had killed tens of thousands, so it was truth. But because people were praising him because that, and 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 it, and praise came off of Saul and onto David, he got jealous because of pride in him. He was not getting the adoration. That's how pride can sneak in, just that quickly. 
Think about this. Where I work at the airport, do you know why I am able to sometimes take some time off? Why? Because I have good people around me. Okay? Just because somebody comes to me and say, hey, Neil, I have this idea. Hey, if you have ideas better than mine, we'll go with your idea. That's how we have to deal with it. But if, if we go around and allow pride, oh, well, because he didn't come with my, because that was my idea, wasn't my idea, I'm not going to use it. Uh, That's what pride will do. Right there. Pride. It's true. Pride. Let me tell you something. Be aware of our human condition. Because pride is waiting to rear its ugly head. Let me tell you, pride will make us lie. Pride will make us steal. Pride will put us in situations we have no business in. Look at this, and it's going to be projected. When we cannot, listen to this, when we cannot come to a realization that we all have the ability to be prideful, if we can't even come to that realization that we all have the ability to be prideful, then that is an indication of pride. If you look at yourself and say, you know what? I am never prideful. That's pride. That's an indication of pride. You know what I mean? That's like telling somebody, you know what? I'm the most humble person I know. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Matthew 26. So we're going to go read verse 36 to 41 now. Matthew 26, verse 36 to 41. We're going to finish off. It says, Then Jesus went with the disciples to a place. Remember, let me recap. Remember, Peter had said, Even if I disown you, even if they disown you, I will never disown you. And Jesus tells him, You're going to disown me three times. Then Jesus went with the disciples to a place called Gethsemane. This is the night before the night when Jesus was captured to be crucified. Went with the disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken away from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Remember, he, he asked them to sleep and to pray for him, right? Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Listen to this. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Everybody say flesh. 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 This is another, we spoke about pride. This is another human condition we're talking about. Flesh. As much as we are willing to do things for the Lord, we have to understand that within each and every one of us, there's a war going on. Do you know there's a war going on within you? There's a war going on in you, within you. There's another great hindrance to us when we do not understand our human condition. The flesh is weak. Everybody say that. The flesh is weak. Yes, we are saved. Yes, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, we have been empowered to do great and mighty things. This, however, does not mean that we can let our guard down. Peter, James, and John let their guard down. And what did they do? They fell asleep. And if we continue to read the scripture, we'll find they fell asleep three times while Jesus was praying. Jesus told them to watch and pray lest they enter temptation. They were willing, but their flesh was weak.
That that same human condition of the flesh not only affected Peter, James, and John, that same condition affected everybody, including Jesus. What? Yes. He was tempted by the devil in the desert. However, what separates us from Christ is he overcame all temptation. We, on the other hand, give in to temptation at times. Let me give you an example. Yvonne was with me. It's before we were married. That's when she used to be chasing me all over the place. <laughs> right? Right, Yvonne? <laughs> Pride. Yes. Thank you. We went to on a mission trip to Costa Rica. And this is about the flesh. Went on a mission trip to Costa Rica. When we went on a mission trip to Costa Rica, we went to this restaurant. And when we went to this restaurant, how many of you know what chicharrones is? Nobody? Okay, I know it's chicharrones here. It's like pig, the skin, you know, when you're um, on a pig and the skin is, is, is crispy. You don't know that, Jimmy? Yeah. Poor Jimmy. <laughs> no. I know. Where, where are you from again? Cleveland? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what it is, it's, 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 it's like if you bake a ham, you bake a ham and the skin of the ham gets crispy. Right. Okay. That's a chicharron. That's chicharronas. Like the skin. And then you take it and you bite it. It's chewy and you chew on it. You know, it's kind of, anyway. <laughs> I was used to chicharrones as just the skin. I went to Costa Rica and the chicharrones is the skin plus a big old chunk of pork meat on it. Flesh got a hold of me. <laughs> I ate and I ate. Oh. Oh. And I could literally, listen to this now, listen to this. This is a part of flesh. I could literally feel my blood pressure rising. Right? How many of you know that I did not stop eating? <laughs> right? I kept on eating. She, she was there. And I just kept on eating. Despite my body telling me, my mind telling me, everything telling me about flesh, wanted this chicharroni so much. So I kept on eating. Do you see how the flesh can, can grab a hold of you? It'll make you do stuff that you know is wrong, but it, it just you just want it so much that you keep on doing it. That's the power of the flesh. Something as simple as that. The flesh. Now, following the flesh, listen to this. Following the flesh will never work out for our good. No matter how great it seems at the time, following the flesh will never work out for our good. No matter how good it seems at the time. Yeah, if I do this, this will work out. You will know it's the flesh. Or you know it's God. Trust me. Now, I'm not saying these things to let you know that you're defeated. I'm telling you these things that you may be aware you understand? It's like looking in a mirror. Get a good estimation of yourself. I, I have, we all have pride issues. We all have flesh issues, but we need to acknowledge that those things can, has the ability to rise up in us. But he wants you to be aware. One of the things that you will find in any military academy is the phrase that you must know your enemy. And that's what we're doing here today. Saying, you know what? Pride is our enemy. Flesh is our enemy. But we need to understand what we're dealing with. Because if you know your enemy, you'll be able to take steps to cut him off, contradict him, to stop him. But if you don't know your enemy, they're able to sneak up on you because you don't even know what they look like. Our flesh is a weakness and when we do not recognize this, this human condition as weakness then we will always be in trouble 
Our flesh is a weakness. And when we do not recognize this weak, this human condition as weakness, then we will always be in trouble. Now look at the Apostle Paul, Romans 7, 15 to 25. And this is in the New Living Translation. And, and just listen, now remember the Apostle Paul, he, I would call him the super possible, probably the greatest, if not one of the greatest, if not the greatest apostle in the Bible. He is responsible for writing two thirds of the New Testament. And this is what he had to deal with. He says, I don't really understand myself. You ever, you ever look at that? I don't, I, I don't really understand what's happening. I don't understand why I'm doing this. I don't really understand myself. Listen to this. For what I want to do, for I want to do what is right, but what happens? But I don't do it. <laughs> okay? I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Wow. But listen to this. But if I know that what I'm doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. The law is basically all the commandments in the Bible that tells you don't do this, don't do that, da 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 da. Right? So when you have a feeling that hey, it, 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 this thing, I, 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 this thing, I know I ought to, I shouldn't be doing it because. I have an internal feeling that I shouldn't be doing it. But then that same fe feeling also agrees with the law. So the law is good. So even the law is telling me, hey, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't allow the flesh to, to deal with you. So I'm not doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. Everybody say flesh. flesh. It is sin living in me that does it. Verse 18. And I know that nothing good, everybody say flesh, flesh, nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. Talking about the flesh. I want to do what is right, but I can't. Think about that. I want to do what is right. <laughs> But I can't. Do you know, you know how much trouble, that, just that, that, that verse there, do you know how many times you get in trouble? A lot. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> because of that. We know what we need to do, but there's something within us that's, no, go ahead. No, it's okay, Jimmy. You can go ahead and do that. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Flesh. <laughs> I want to do verse 19. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I, I don't want to do what is wrong, but what? But I, but I do it anyway. That's right. <coughs> yep. Isn't this just mind boggling? I want to do right, but I do wrong. Mm -hmm. What's that song? If loving you is right, I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> verse 20. That's <laughs> true. But if I do what I don't want to do, uh -huh. I am not the, I'm not really the one doing wrong. It's the flesh. It is sin living in me that does it. The flesh. Yeah. The flesh. I have discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. Wow. I love God's law with all my heart. So God's law is telling us to do right. And Paul says, I love it with all my heart. Verse 23. But there's another power within me. Everybody say flesh. flesh. Remember I said that there's a war. There it is. There's another power within me that is at war within my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Look at that. Oh, what a miserable person I am. This is Paul now. Paul has just taken us through this tug of war. I want to do what is right, but I end up doing what is wrong. I know, I know what is right, but I still go and do what is wrong. Right? So he's frustrated right now. So what does he say? Oh, what a miserable person I am. Have you ever, have you ever given in to your flesh? 
And when you're giving into your flesh, you feel just so horrible. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He said, man, why did I do that? Lori, why did I do that? Right? He says, oh, what a miserable person I am. Then the million dollar question, who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death. Because we follow the flesh, it leads to sin and death. Wages of sin is death. When we follow the flesh, it leads us to sin, which leads us to what? Death. Verse 25. Remember the question, who will free me from this life? 25, it says, thank God. Huh. What's the answer? The answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see how it is in my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. <laughs> Paul like I said, wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Paul, the super apostle, Paul, the one that, that, that met Jesus face to face and Jesus, and, and Jesus blinded him, then gave him sight and he was on fire and went after, went after serving the Lord with all his might, all his power. Paul, when I read the Bible, that's one of the people that, that I really look up to. Paul, who says, in my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. That's us. Yeah. That's us. If the Apostle Paul can go through these struggles, what about us? But as much struggles as Paul went through, he said, thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Regardless of our pride, regardless of our sin nature, regardless of our human condition, Jesus Christ is still able to deliver us. Regardless of our pride, regardless of our sin, Sorry, regardless of our pride, regardless of our sin nature, regardless of our human condition, Jesus Christ is still able to deliver us. We see Jesus Christ combat pride and flesh repeatedly, and he did that through one thing and one thing only, and that's through humility. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2, 1 and 4 says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any communion sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like minding, minded, having the same love, being in one spirit and of one mind. Verse three. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. Everybody say flesh. Flesh. Do nothing out of flesh mm -hmm. or vain conceit. Everybody say pride yeah. or vain conceit. Rather, so what it's saying, don't give in to the flesh, don't give in to your pride. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. See, we combat the human condition of pride and flesh through humility. We do that by valuing others above ourselves, not looking to our own interests, but to the interest of others. Do you know how hard it is to be prideful and fleshly when we value everyone around us higher than ourselves? Think about that. How am I going to be prideful when I look at you and I elevate you? And I said, you know what, Jimmy is a good, 
good guy. You know, I really like Jimmy. I, whatever I can do, you know, and, 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 and I begin to elevate you. Once I start elevating you, how can I be prideful? Because I'm elevating you above me. What, 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 where pride comes is when I elevate myself above you. So to combat the pride, combat my flesh, I'm going to elevate. I'm going to value others. Now, I'm not saying to be a martyr, but when we go around and make our, when we go around and look at others and see how you can make their burden lighter, pride and our fleshly desires have no chance. Remember, sometimes you look at pride, you look at a homeless person. And y'all heard this. But for the grace of God, there goes I. Mm -hmm. You know what? That homeless person, that could be me, that could be you. Try. Could be a break in life and bam, there you go. The person that is always tap dancing on your last nerve. But for the grace of God, there goes I. We have elevated them above ourselves. This is what ultimate humility looks like. Philippians 2, 5 and 8. We're going to end with this. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ. Who being, now this is, this is, this is humility, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used as his own advantage. Think about what, it, what this is saying. He says, he is God. I'm not going to use this power that I have. When I go down here, I'm going to limit myself and be just like them. So therefore, I'm going to literally elevate them. Because he's God. We, God is always above us. But he says, no, 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 no. I don't consider, he didn't consider equality with God something to be used as his own advantage. Verse 7. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. In certain translation, it says bond servant or slave. It's all the same thing. He, he, he made himself under, right? right? Being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. This is the ultimate form of humility. Christ laid down his right as God and came in the form of a servant. And on top of that, subjected himself to human death, even though he was God. What in life are we holding on to when dealing with others? Is our position at, at our job what defines us? Is the amount of money we have, what defines us? Is, is our 401k, what defines us? And you know, as important as all those things were, none, of, none came close to what Jesus gave up to walk among us. He gave up his right and authority as God. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and he gave himself up for me. Right now, whatever we've gone through, whatever human condition we have, Christ is the answer and when we walk with Christ we walk with him by faith we walk with him in humility and we may not overcome every single time but we have access to the answer every single time the more we trust in him the more we walk with him the more we put our faith in him is the less that the pride can grab us, is less that our flesh will control us. The more we put in is what we get out. 
So I just want to encourage each and every person in here today that despite our pride, despite our fleshly nature, Christ has the final answer Amen. in what we do. 